Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some tortured heroines. I've seen a lot of recommendation videos about tortured heroes and heroes who have gone through a lot of things and their romances that they have. I've never seen one for the heroine, so I thought I would make one today. So these romances have heroines that have maybe a troubled past or something they're trying to heal over or work through um, and their beautiful romance. The first one that I have is Hidden Waters by Katherine Cowles. This is my favorite book in her Tattered and Torn series. This is about Beckett and Addie. Addie was previously raised and until like a year ago maybe or a few months ago was in a cult and she finally escaped that life. Um, but she is still scared out of her mind that she's going to be forced back into that life. Her cousin ends up letting her stay in one of their extra houses on one of their properties. She's so far living an okay life by herself. Um, but then her cousin asks her if Beckett can move in with her because he needs somewhere to stay while his house is being built. Beckett is um, the brother to her cousin's boyfriend and she's like, okay, that's okay, yes, he can stay with me. Um, and also Addie doesn't own the house, so in her head she's like, it doesn't really matter what I think also because I don't own this house, like he can stay there. Beckett is a doctor who was doing some work overseas and now he's back and he really wants to plant his roots in this town called Wolf Gap that they all live in. And when he meets Addie, like his also his priorities shift because he starts falling for his roommate. But then Addie's past comes rearing its head and Becca is there to try and protect her. Um, I just love their dynamic so much. I love Beckett and how sweet and patient he is with Addie because she has experienced some traumatic things in her life, especially from a man's hand. And he is so patient with her and is there to verbalize that as well. He's like, I will never do something you don't want me to do. I am here for you and what you need. And um, I just want you to know that. And oh, he is he is so incredibly sweet. Next is Southern Storms by Brittany Cherry. Our heroine in here ends up moving to her sister's small town after she is getting divorced from her husband in a loveless marriage. Um, and there she ends up bumping in to Jax, who was a guy she was actually friends with at as a kid at a summer camp, um, but he is completely grown up now, both of them are, and they reconnect all these years later, but Jax doesn't really want anything to do with our heroine because he feels like she would be nothing but a distraction in his life because um, his life is down in the dumps right now. Um, so they're kind of both tortured characters in a way. The heroine in this book, she has experienced a lot of tragedy in her life and some trauma from her marriage and what she's experienced. She's lost a child and that has definitely affected her in the way that she views life and she is still somewhat struggling with that and Jax is there to help her through that pain at points and it's beautiful. Brittany, Brittany knows how to tug at your heart dreams and give you characters who are very well rounded and they've also gone through a lot like they have the human experience. Next is Fractured Souls by Neva Altaj. This is book number six in her Perfectly Imperfect series which is a mafia romance series. All of the mafia books can be read as standalones. They don't really have a lot to do with each other. Some of them overlap like side character wise, but not really. Like these two characters, you didn't meet them like at all in the other books. This one is definitely the darkest book in the whole series. So please be aware of that before going in. This book is about Aza and Pavel. Aza was kidnapped a few months ago and forced into basically being drugged and uh, used for her body in a mafia family, not Pavel's mafia family, um, but a different one. And she has experienced a lot of hurt and pain and assault these past few months until one day she is able to escape, but she literally, the only way she can escape is to run outside with no clothes on and she ends up getting accidentally hit by Pavel's car. Like she runs out in the middle of the street and he hits her um, and he is like freaking out. He's like, oh my gosh, I have to save this woman, brings her back to his home and she is absolutely terrified. She is terrified. She's gone through a lot of stuff. And then Pavel, her savior, is her only safe haven. Like she goes absolutely insane if he's not around, 
if he's not there to comfort her, like she doesn't know how to live without this man. Might be a little unhealthy at some points, but um, she's working through that and dealing with that. Um, and this man just becomes her ultimate, ultimate savior. But then Pavel is trying to find her family and where she comes from in order to bring her back to her family after her kidnapping. So there's a lot going into this one. It's very dark. Please check her Twitter warnings. There is on page essay on page essay, not from the hero, obviously, um, but from what the heroine experiences at the beginning of this book. Next, I have Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. Crystal is a heroine in here who has a tortured past, if you will. I won't go into specifics, but she has experienced a lot of heartbreak and trauma in her life. And at the beginning of this book, she is actually a dancer at a club and the hero comes up to her one day and is like, hey, I'll pay you if you can help me with my problem of being scared of intimacy and being close to people. The hero in here, Gabriel, was kidnapped when he was a child and abused for years by a man. And ever since he escaped that life, like he has a hard time being close to other people and like not flinching away from people. So he like tells Crystal like, I just even just, I wanna learn how to hold someone's hand or just like sit close to them without freaking out. So can you help me with that? I will pay you for it. At first she declines and says like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going through my own crap right now. But then something happens to a point where she accepts and she needs the money, so she does. And then shortly after the fact, she ends up getting brutally assaulted and beaten up behind the club by some horrible men. And Gabriel ends up finding her and she can't take care of herself right now. She's so injured, so he takes her to his house to live in the spare bedroom and take care of her. There is a lot going on in this one, um, a lot going on in all of these books, but Mia Sheridan is another author that just knows how to rip apart your heart, honestly. If you want a novella, I have Breaking the Bully by Jessica Kane. The heroine of this book lives in an abusive household. Her father is not a good man. And um, she finds out that this guy in high school, in her high school, like is basically like in love with her. He like confessed his feelings in the rain to her. Like he is in love with her. Um, but the night that he tells her this, her father ends up like witnessing it and is able to like see from afar and threatens her and is like, I will kill that boy. If you're with him, you're not gonna be with him. And so she ignores him, cannot say a word to him. And he is like so upset, doesn't know what happened and wants to get any emotion out of this woman as possible. So he ends up bullying her at school, like not seriously bullying, but kind of bullying her. Um, this is the only bully romance that I like, by the way. I don't like bully romances. I love this one though, it's really good. And then once he learns why she stopped talking to him, like the boxing gloves are coming on and he's going to go rescue her. <laughs> so um, if you want a short read with this, with this character type in here, I would definitely recommend this one. If you want a fantasy romance, I have A Touch of Stone and Snow by Mila Vane. By the way, this is the second book in a series. It can totally be read as a standalone. The characters don't overlap. However, I think there is a common like villain in the series, um, but book three isn't out yet. So we're gonna see what happens in book three with that common villain. This is about Lizen and Arax. They were childhood best friends. They grew up together in this village, in this fantasy realm. And like they knew, they've known their whole lives, like this is gonna be my person. This is my person, this is who I'm gonna be, be with. And they've saved themselves for each other their whole entire lives. At the beginning of this book, Lizen ends up going off to fight in this battle where she is the only survivor of. And um, the people of her town, when she comes back, thinks that she's cursed because of it. She got a scar in the battle. And if you have a scar on your face, you're considered cursed by the gods. And so they think that she is cursed and she betrayed all their people and that she should be dead. She gets cast out by her village and um, Arax goes to find her and follow her to help her come to help to ask her to help him complete a quest he's on. But also he sees it as an excuse to like go and find the woman that he is in love with, his best friend. Lizen has a lot of trauma in her life because of what she's experienced even before that battle, but especially the way that people have treated her since her injury and since that battle have like definitely affected her. Um, and Arax is there to help her build her confidence back up again and show her like, you're the same woman you've always been and you're everything. Ugh, I love him. Ooh, I have two Ruby Dixon. Ruby Dixon has a few characters like this, um, but my favorite one is Barbarian's Redemption. This is the romance between Beck and Ellie. Ellie is a human woman who has experienced a lot of traumatic things. She was kidnapped as a young girl from Earth and has been an alien slave since then. She gets dumped on the planet Not Hoth with a bunch of other human women and she finds out that Beck is her fated mate. She doesn't want to be touched. She literally for years has never taken a shower, cut her hair, brushed her hair for years because she wants to be as disgusting as possible so she's not desirable for other people. So like 
she doesn't want to be touched. She does not want anyone to be with her. She doesn't want a mate. And Beck is shocked because he lives in a world when, where mates are revered and your whole life you've been waiting for this. And then there's this woman who doesn't want one. So he's just there to wait for her and to be patient with her and to help her deal with the things that she's gone through and to get to know her like on a personal level as a person first. So um, this is my favorite book in the Eyes of Planet Barbarian series. I love it a lot. Another one is Sam's Secret. This is book number um, 14 in the Ice Home series, which is a spinoff to Ice Planet Barbarians. If you want to know like the reading order for these two series, I'll link down below my Ice Planet Barbarian reading guide video where I talk about like the order you should read these books in because I don't recommend reading one series and then reading another. Like you have to like read them in jagged order kind of. Um, so I'll link that video down below if you want to know, but this is book number 14. So I don't want to spoil anything, but um, Sam in here is a human woman who lives on the ice home beach, which is another camp on the planet um, where humans have settled with some aliens. And this is her romance with a guy. I can't even tell you who the guy is because it's supposed to be a little bit of a secret before you go in because um, it's Sam's secret. <laughs> and um, this is her romance with a guy she didn't expect to resonate to or be faded mates with. Sam also doesn't want a faded mate. She does not want resonance with somebody. Um, she was in a very abusive relationship before she got to Earth and she's actually terrified. Thinks that her ex will somehow find her in on another planet. Like she's terrified of him. And so every time a new spaceship comes, she runs and hides and thinks the worst case scenario that he has found her. So she doesn't have like the best relationship with men and is honestly scared to be with one. But the guy that she is with is the ultimate sweet, like ultimate sweetest man. Like I love him so much. And he is so patient and kind and gentle with her. Like they're perfect together. Okay, lastly, I have two historicals. First is a Maya Banks book. This is Highlander Most Wanted. The heroine of this book, this is book number two in this series, the Montgomery and Armstrong. So the first book is Never Seduce a Scott, which is one of my favorite books ever. The heroine of this book was kidnapped by the same guy who kidnapped Eveline in book one. And, but she has been under this guy's thumb for years. The whole town has ridiculed and bullied her because she thinks that she is with this guy willingly when she is beaten and assaulted by him constantly. She gets rescued in at the end of book one along with Eveline. And this is her romance with one of the Montgomery brothers. He ends up realizing like she has gone through a lot and he is gonna be there for her and help her through this transition. And um, then he ends up falling in love with her. It's a beautiful book. She has gone through so much and I love how how caring he is for her. And the last one that I have is The Viking Chiefs Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris. Um, if you want a Viking romance, look no further. Our heroine in here was in an abusive relationship. She was the wife of a Jarl who is essentially kind of like a Viking king, if you will. He ends up dying and uh, his sons now are trying to vie to see who's gonna marry her next. And she's like, no, that's not gonna happen. I am escaping this life and she packs up all of her things one night and gets on a long boat to travel far, far away. She doesn't want to ever be married ever again because of what her husband did to her. But then the boat ends up crashing and she ends up getting rescued by some men and the hero is one of said men. He ends up bringing all of the people who survived the crash to his village where, because of a certain reason, you're going to figure out why, the two of them have to get married. And neither of them are very happy about this. He didn't expect to marry this woman he thinks is very rich and like vain when she's not. Um, he's just judging her um, and she just doesn't want to be married at all. I really like this one. If you want a Viking romance, like please pick this one up and please pick up this author in general. I love Lucy Morris. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romance recommendations with tortured heroines. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what emoji are we gonna do? Let's do a boat. <laughs> a boat emoji because she crashes a boat she crashes and she doesn't crash the boat but she's in a boat that crashes um anyway leave me a boat emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i'll see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all